He's a beast, that fella. I'm back at the place right up in the hills where I was in the previous outdoor video that I did. And this time we're going to try and demonstrate the pipe method of catching fish. There's a couple of different ways you can approach this. You can either put the pipes in, leave it for a day or so, come back, make a real disturbance in the pool. Hopefully the fish will go into what they know is a safe haven, i.e. the pipes. Put a hand over each end and lift them out. We've only got about an hour, so the chances of that method working are fairly slim, but you never know. Now the second way would be to marry the pipe method up with the, um, the trout tickling method, which would basically just be feeling underneath rocks and so on. If you put your pipe in a likely looking place with a stone over the top to keep it down, then you go into all the overhanging ledges, see if you can catch fish. You might be able to catch them in your hand, you might not, and if not, you might just scare them out into your pipe. That's the most likely method to work, but let's see which method does work, if any. This is the pool I was at in my last video, and unfortunately it's fairly deep and the shelf goes way under, much too far to actually get your hand underneath. But I'm gonna drop one of these in and see if I can catch that reasonably big fish that we've just seen, because that would be a really beautiful one to show you. I think it'll just about fit into here. Unfortunately, there's already a nation of hiding spaces underneath that big shelf. So the chances of it going into the pipe are quite slim. But stranger things have happened. This is humongous. It's even got a little bit of lead in it. Look at that. What a monster. That's deep purple, isn't it? Have you ever seen one that size? It's massive. Definitely don't want to be drinking downstream of that, do you? <laughs> right next to the water's edge. Yeah, there's a big fern on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Just to the left of that. There it goes. There's a kind of little purple bit. I'm Want to give it a wash? See what it comes up like? Oh, it's super purple, that! <laughs> That's almost black, it's so purple. It's blurple. No. There's a sight you don't often see. Oops. Two butterflies mating, joined together in holy matrimony. You better hurry up because it's starting to rain. Here we've got a common toad on the left and a nice green grasshopper on the right. Ordinarily the toad would be eating that grasshopper but seeing as I've got it in my hand that's the last thing on its mind. 
Let's let them go. You want to let that one go, James? Nope. That's it. Let this fella go back under here as well. There he goes. <laughs> More or less just in here. Oh, there he is. He's going to get out. No. Oh, he's a skier. No, he's, he's, he's gone back in. Oh, right. Why did he go back in? Awesome. Why? He went through back through the hole. There's a hole. He knows there's a hole now. Oh, he's here, Dad. No. Oh. We've got one, we've finally got one. There you go, beautiful little hill stream brown trout. Lovely, let's put them back. Now here's an orchid of the same species that was in my last video. This is actually a white variety. They do come in a range of colours from more or less dark purple through to lavender sort of colour, right through to white. And that's one of the white ones, which you don't often see. That's a really nice find. Oh, the fish is there? Yeah, it's is right it? there. Just stay still because there's a little black one coming down. It's just right on my hand. You try and get one hand just be on its front and one hand just before its tail. I kind of have. You know, you need oh. it. It's escaped, has it? Yeah. Well, what about trying the pipe? Just lift the pipe out. Anything in it? No. Oh, Right, here we go. Perfect demonstration. You're not actually in fully. Very good. Right, very good. Just don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> you just had a you just had a foot on there and a foot on there and just sitting there underneath you sunning itself it was a slow worm that's a massive one isn't it yeah it's a decent size yeah <laughs> I didn't even see that no I didn't see it until it moved that's just gone there <laughs> that's cool right that's the end of our adventure we saw plenty of fish and we managed to catch one of them twice in a little pool using a combination of the pipe and the trout tickling method. Worked very, very well together. So that's probably the one to go for. Obviously, if you've got more time than we had, you could put the pipes in various pools, remove as many of the natural um, hideaways as you can, and just leave your pipes in, come back a day, two days, three days, or a week later, and make a bit of a disturbance in the pool. The fish will go straight into the pipes, and just lift them straight out. That honestly does work very, very well. So hopefully that's demonstrated the pipe method. It would have been lovely to catch one using just our hands, like 
tickling trout properly but it just wasn't to be. They're very very small these fish and the tickling method actually works better with bigger fish. You know anything up to that sort of size and above. It's very difficult to catch small fish in your hands because they're absolutely tiny. Um, there's a buzzard, I'll try and get that on film. Thanks very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed this video, I shall see you in the next one. I'm not going to get that on yes, video, am I? Thanks for watching three times. <laughs> I know, I can't even get that bit right, can I? <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Oh, the Thanks buzzard's very much gone. For uh, well, I'm just so grateful that people are watching, you know, I need to, I need to say it at least three times. <laughs> <laughs>